Aces, it's time for an ACF review and we're gonna start with the game responsible for creating the most successful and loved flight shooter franchise in gaming history. And of course, I'm talking about Air Combat. So, let's do this! Air Combat was Namco's first console game on the flight shooter genre. This game was released in 1995 for the PlayStation 1, however its development team had already some previous experience with the arcade genre since they had created the arcade game in 1993 that was also called Air Combat. Talking about names, internationally this game was marketed as Air Combat, however on Namco's home country Japan this game was called Ace Combat which became the official name of the series and its subsequent releases. The story of Air Combat is very simple. The player fights as Phoenix, leader of the mercenary Scarface Squadron, who is hired by an unknown country after terrorist forces occupy and take over the government. Other than that, there's not much to say since the game has an arcade style, but one thing to point out is that all the game takes place in a fictional universe, later known as Strange Row according to future Ace Combat games. This is of course the opposite of early Namco marketing in North America, which implied that Scarface Squadron was an elite unit hired by NATO to be sent and fight some rebels in the Middle East. As far as gameplay goes, the player is tasked to destroy specific targets in each mission that are marked as TGT and are mentioned in the briefing that happens prior to every mission. Besides the TGT, the player also has the option to destroy secondary targets as he can also get more credits from them. With the credits, the player can purchase and play with a total of 16 aircraft, each with its strengths and weaknesses, which are displayed in the hangar. With that said, players can choose an aircraft that is better suited for each mission such as an attacker for air-to-ground missions or an aircraft that better suits the player style. Time to complete each mission is presented on the top left of the HUD as the fuel bar. The HUD is very straightforward and easy to understand. It includes your airspeed on the left, an artificial horizon in the middle, your altimeter to the right, your heading on the top, your radar on the bottom left corner which is toggled automatically to what target you have selected, the damage indicator in the bottom right corner and finally the ammo counter on the very bottom. Due to the arcade style of the game and the number of enemies, all the aircraft start with 65 missiles and almost 10,000 bullets. Now, of course, this is a very unrealistic approach, but it is justified by the nature of the game. Throughout the missions of the game, you get yelled by your co-pilot with information regarding the battle, such as... Up ahead! Focus on our six! Enemy locked on target! Fire! Take off! Fire! Fire! And in some missions of the game, you will be able to bring a wingman that can help you complete the missions by covering you or engaging other enemies at his own will. Also another feature of the game is that after completing the first couple of missions of the game, the player is given the option of choosing the next mission in the map with their own locations. However, the order that the missions are played doesn't really matter and doesn't change the story of the game or creates a new path. As for the controls, there are two settings, namely the novice, for players getting introduced to the genre, and the expert controls, which give the player more control of the aircraft's movements. During my time playing the game, I only had some minor difficulty getting used to the expert controls since the PlayStation 1 games don't have an analog stick, and so the player has to use the arrows in order to maneuver. One thing I didn't like though is that there are only two cameras in the game, the HUD and the third person view. And the problem is that the HUD in the third person view is severely limited, including only your ammo and the damage indicators, which ended up forcing me to play in the HUD view since it's very hard to judge the aircraft's altitude without an altimeter due to the poor graphics. Oh yeah, graphics. There is not much to say in this criteria because as you can see, they suck. Like I mentioned, one major issue I had was not knowing if I had enough altitude to maneuver because you can barely see the terrain. Other than that, the aircraft were modeled in a simple way with not a lot of detail. But at least the paint scheme was cool, at least for the 90s. 
As for the mission designs, I do have to give credit to the game because there were many different types of missions in the game, including bomber intercept, dogfighting, air to ground attacks, ravine flying, and even destroying a giant aerial fortress as the enemy super weapon in the final mission of the game. The environments were also balanced, including missions over forests, cities, deserts, mountains, the sea, and even some that would take place at night. So definitely a positive point to the game with a total of 17 missions. Other than the missions, I should also mention that this game had some very cool bonuses and unlockables that could be accessed by the secret menu. These include credits, extra wingmen, different paint teams, and even a secret minigame that would take place in the loading screens. Lastly, one very positive aspect of Air Combat was the background music. The rock soundtrack of the game was many times a pump of adrenaline to the missions as you can hear right now playing on the background of the video. With all of that said, let's go for a quick recap of all the criteria followed by my overall review of the game. As for the story, there's not much story, it's very simple, you just have the terrorists and you're a mercenary and you kill them and then... Freedom and happiness for everyone! What do you expect from our arcade game? It's not positive, it's not negative, it's just... Acceptable. As for gameplay, I did have fun, even though there is no analog for the... Of course, it's a PlayStation 1. My overall experience was good, you even have the two mode of controls, the novice, the nugget, and also the expert, which is the one you should do. There's also a two-player mode I haven't played, that's why I couldn't get a recording of that, but it's, it'll probably just go into a third fight and probably not that much fun, but I never tried. Maybe you can try. One problem of the game though was the graphics, they just suck, that's, that's what I can say, and they did decrease my overall enjoyment of the game, but you can still play it and it's acceptable since it was the first game that they had in the PlayStation 1 for flight shooter genre, so it's understandable. And now here are the good things about Air Combat. First is the immense diversity in between missions. There are 17 missions, each of them take place in a different area with a different terrain and different types of enemies, different objectives. And it does really make for a diversified game. It's not just like same mission, different area or vice versa. And the one thing I think probably most important right in the end of the game, which is the last mission, you have to fight against the enemy aerial fortress, which it's not like a B-17, it's way more than a B-17, the flying fortress, it's just something huge and a massive airplane with anti-aircraft guns and missiles, and this is one of the key aspects that made its way into the whole Ace Combat series, which is the concept of the super weapons, both flying and not flying. There are some ones that don't fly either. And other than that, and I think probably the best thing about Air Combat overall was the music. Seriously, Air Combat or Ace Combat, the series as a whole, would not be the same without the music. And it all started here in Air Combat, in the first game. You know, you know, have the rock music, or you know, some of them makes you feel like you're being a pilot for Top Gun, I know some people compare that a lot. And so the music was just an incredible, important part of the game and it started right here with quality. Of course, styles in Ace Combat music have upgraded or spread out a little bit in other games, but the original style made its way in Air Combat and I think is one of the key elements of the game. Now for my overall review and analysis or score of the game and I don't like to put a number into a game because to me that doesn't make much sense I would just say Air Combat is a good game If you're into flight genre and you like playing retro games or you're into that kind of stuff definitely do play it If you're not that much into those I would recommend checking out if you're an Ace Combat fan If you don't like the retro game, the PS1 games, because of the graphics and all that, I say maybe don't go as far as Air Combat or Ace Combat 1. Instead, focus on some of the newer titles, maybe Ace Combat 2 or 3. They, there's a lot of upgrades into them. And talking about Ace Combat 2, that's gonna be featured on my next video, my next reveal. So, hope you guys have enjoyed. Please let me know your comments and thoughts on Air Combat in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and see you next time.